I saw this come up on my Twitter yesterday. Who would win in a fight? 100 humans or one gorilla? And when I first saw it, I thought, well, obviously 100 humans, there's 100 of us. But when you think about it more deeply, that may not be the answer. So I took this morning to do some scientific analysis to give a definitive answer on who would actually win, 100 humans or one gorilla. Let's get into it. And of course, leave your thoughts in the comments. So first we need to cover the pedantics. There always is when it comes to experiments. Number one, is it 100 humans in a cage around a gorilla? Like, is it just one gorilla in the middle and just 100 humans all around attacking at once? Or is it one by one by one like the gladiator? Because if it's one by one, the humans have got no chance. The, the gorilla is just absolutely wiping out every single person in a row. But if it's 100 humans charging at once, there's more of an opportunity there. And secondly, what is the caliber of human? Is it 100 people signing up to fight the gorilla? Or is it just like Thanos randomly deciding 100 people to fight that gorilla? Because then we have to look at the average human statistics. Because let's be honest, the average human overestimates what they can actually achieve. Let's be completely honest. The average human has no chance fighting a gorilla. Even five average humans has no chance. So for the purpose of this experiment, I'm going to assume that it's going to be 100 humans at once in a cage, massive, massive cage, and the humans are going to be averages from our population. I think this is the fairest experiment. So the silverback gorilla, it is five foot tall, short guy, not tall whatsoever, but he weighs 195 kilograms, which is 430 pounds for those of you in America. So five foot tall, but almost 200 kilos. That is a big guy. Now more impressively than that, a silverback gorilla can lift 800 kilograms, 1,760 pounds of dead weight. That is far more than any human. They can bench press five times more than the average human can. But even more importantly, there's a 1,300 PSI bite force. That means when a silverback gorilla bites you, you're gonna feel it. In fact, that can kill humans if it's in a vulnerable area. For comparison, humans only have a bite force of 100 to 200 PSI. That is 10 times less than the gorilla. So if you're biting the gorilla, the gorilla ain't really feeling it, let's be honest. But the biggest stat is the punch force. The gorilla has a punch force of 1,300 to 2,700 pounds. Now in comparison, Mike Tyson has a punch force of 1,300 pounds, meaning the lowest average gorilla punches like Mike Tyson. Now I want you to answer me this. Can you take a punch from Mike Tyson? Because if you're being honest, the answer is no. So in that cage, we've got a gorilla that can punch more than Mike Tyson, weigh double what Mike Tyson does and bite like a crocodile. Truthfully, the humans one by one have very little chance, but this is where the group element comes in. You see, there's a way humans can win this. The weakest amongst the group have to basically sacrifice themselves for the stronger people to come in with hits. Because a 1,200 pound punch can stun a gorilla and that's all you need for the others to basically rush the gorilla and get it while it's down. So you basically need a row of humans to be sacrificial lambs for the gorilla while the stronger ones come up and surprise the gorilla from behind. Because if the humans are just all circling a gorilla, there's no way it can take everyone at once. Now there are going to be casualties, there's no way humans win this without some getting injured and losing their lives. But if they're strategic, 100 humans, 100% can beat the gorilla. But in this generation Z, it requires humans to sacrifice themselves, which let's be honest, most people are not willing to do. So to scientifically answer the question, 100 humans versus one gorilla, who wins? Well, it will be the humans given they actually strategically organize who's strongest amongst them and people are willing to sacrifice themselves. But even with a victory, at the very least, 20 to 30 humans will lose their lives. Do you agree? Let me know in the comments.